about hidden Armenians, it became larger and larger and larger population. So if we are talking about numbers, yes, I believe that there are over millions of people in there uh, waiting to be able to be connected to us. But how? It was Urfa. This guy came to my hotel to talk. He was working in the mayor's office. His name was Aziz, and his grandfather was Armenian. This was interesting, not the grandmother. Grandfather was Armenian. And they get married to each other with Islamized Armenians, other Islamized Armenians, and there was a whole bunch of family. He took me to his house, which was an state-built house, which was 40 floors, and every floor has three houses around there. And I stayed there, met with every house. Every night I was in one, one from the other. Coffee, tea, coffee, tea, talking, mothers, fathers, everyone is saying stories. Everyone, is, or every woman, all women are wheeled, they're praying. I stayed in there in five o'clock in the morning, they were uh, waking up to pray. They were Muslims. His son and his daughter, his daughter was nine, his daughter was going to school every day, listening Ibrahim Tatlases in, his, in her iPod, and afterwards coming back to home, listening Allah Levonian from Armenia. And one more point from that, he took me to a place which is uh, Furfurlu Jami, they call it, Furfurlu Mosque, which, is, which was a church, and there is a butcher uh, shop in there. There was a butcher shop next to it, and uh, where they all... Uh, put Armenians and they uh, they massacred them, and saying that he is going every month once going to pray in there. He was saying that every time that I'm making namaz, I'm praying. Uh, I'm praying for the people who saved my uh, grandfather, and I'm praying also for the people who were massacred in here. So I started to think, okay, what kind of a trauma this guy has?